In this video, watch how we change a junior's backhand from this to this using this, the Pro Strap. What's up everybody, Austin here from Pro Strap, and after popular demand today, we're gonna go over the two-handed backhand. And in this video in particular, we are gonna focus on the spacing aspect with the dominant arm. When talking about the two-handed backhand, the really important thing to remember is what part does what. Again, like the forehand, our body is gonna be creating the power and our arms and hands are gonna control the ball. But with that, we wanna think about what the right hand is doing and what the left hand is doing. With the right hand, that's gonna be more guiding the swing and getting it to finish where it needs to finish. And we want the left hand to be pushing through and creating more of the push and force through the ball. And with that, again, we're gonna think about what we've talked about previously with the arm to body ratio. But now let's think of a ratio of our arms doing the work with the two-handed backhand. With the power of the shot, my left arm should be probably doing about 70 to 80% of this actual strike of the ball with the right arm stabilizing the shot. To simplify it for today, what we're gonna think of it as is the right arm or your dominant arm is gonna be for the spacing and your left arm or your non-dominant arm is gonna be for the extension out through the shot. Looking at these pro backhands, we can see that they all have one major thing in common. The left arm is pretty much straight through at the contact of the shot. This means that the contact is out in front of the body and that the hitting shoulder has rotated forward into the ball. But in order to do that, they first have to create space, allowing them to generate more leverage in order to create power and spin with the swing. When it comes to spacing on the backhand, it's actually a bit similar to what happens on the forehand. On the forehand, we're gonna get that chicken wing or the bent arm going into the body. On the two-handed backhand, it's very similar. The left arm will often come in like this, being pinched in too close to the body, where it's just kind of shoving through to hit the ball. So you're gonna flatten that ball out and not really be able to produce a lot of spin. We're going to look at a junior player Gavin and help him with his backhand. What we're going to see here is one of the most common issues with junior players and their backhands, having the arms bent through the shot and specifically the left arm. Just before contact, we're going to see both arms really bent. This can be caused by many things, extreme grip, positioning, spacing, just to name a few. Kind of a chicken or the egg scenario, but in this case, it's because of his spacing. At contact, we can see that not only the left elbow is really bent, but also his right. This shows us that not only is contact too close to the body and not far out enough in front, but he's using his arms and hands to generate the power of the shot and not his transfer of weight through the ball. As he extends through, you can see the shoving motion used to push the ball forward with the arms and hands. In doing so, Note how the hitting shoulder stays back, again showing us that he's not getting enough weight through the ball. All of this can be fixed if we can somehow get him to create more space prior to hitting the ball. And with that, the way I want you to think about it the wrong way as you're slinging the ball forward like this, as opposed to driving and extending through like this. Now for an unfair comparison, we're going to see Gavin's backhand compared to Novak Djokovic's backhand, which is known to be pretty good. The major difference is going to be with the position of the left arm when striking the ball. Note how straight Djokovic's left arm is. It's very strong and stable because all of his weight is braced behind the shot. Again, Gavin's arm is very bent because that's what he's using to push the ball forward not the weight from his body. You're not going to be able to extend and drive through if you're not properly spaced out to the side to begin with. Now we're gonna do something new. We're gonna flash forward a few months and look at Gavin's backhand after training. And when using the pro strap on the backhand, it's very much like using it on the forehand. In this position on the dominant arm, it is all about creating that spacing in order to create much more leverage on the swing. With the pro strap hooked up to the backhand, we can see that he's got the cord stretched out, creating space with his shot. The issue for most people is not just creating space, but maintaining that space. 
by keeping the cord stretched through the whole swing, we can see that his left arm has really straightened out, giving him a lot more natural power behind the shot due to the amount of weight moving through the ball. Going back to the Djokovic comparison, we can see how both players have their rackets back in a much more similar position. Shoulders turned, elbows away, and racket tip up. Now at contact, look at how similar the two look. Both players have the left arm straight, braced through the impact of the ball with a lot of weight behind the shot. And remember, this is important. This cannot be done unless you've created enough space before the swing. Now let's compare Gavin's backhand to before using the pro strap. At contact, we see there's a huge improvement in the contact of the ball. Not only is the contact more out in front, but the left arm looks completely different at contact. Also, look at the hitting shoulder. Before it was well behind him after striking the ball, showing the lack of weight transfer. Using the pro strap, look at how much further out in front his hitting shoulder and his hitting hip is. This shows us that he's really gotten his body through the shot, turning his shoulders forward and having a much better weight transfer. Doing this adds way more natural power behind your shot. And with the swing, that's kind of what we want to see is the left arm straightening out basically all the way through contact of the ball and not slinging into it at the elbow like this. We are not going to be able to drive through with that left arm if we're not properly spaced out before we strike the ball. Finally, let's take a look at Gavin's backhand after using the pro strap. In a dramatic improvement, we can see that the left arm is very straight at contact, a huge improvement over what he was doing before. Also, look at the shoulder position after striking the ball. After using the pro strap, he's maintained the shoulder rotation, allowing him to throw more of his weight through the shot, creating a lot more natural power due to the added leverage in his swing. Now our Novak Djokovic comparison isn't going to seem as unfair. Look at the spacing, the contact, and the shoulder position after the ball strike. That is how you learn how to hit a backhand like a pro. With regular training with the pro strap on your backhand, you're going to know a difference in just a few training sessions. Stay tuned for our next video on the two-handed backhand where we're gonna switch the cord over from our right side to our left side and we're gonna talk more about the extension out through the swing. Thanks for watching, we'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.